Welcome to Instant Deck Techs. The aim of this series is to give you a short, concise guide on how to build a certain deck. It won't cover every card, but we'll go through all the categories and go over the types of cards needed to make the deck work. Any card mentioned will be down in the description below. The commander of this deck is Jacob Halken, Inspector. It is 1 and a blue for a 0-2 legendary creature human advisor. It has tap, draw a card, then exile a card from your hand face down. You may look at that card for as long as it remains exiled. You may pay 4 blue blue if you do transform Jacob Halken, Inspector. It transforms into Hulken's Insight, which is a legendary enchantment with At the beginning of your upkeep, exile the top card of your library face down. You may look at that card for as long as it remains exiled. Once, during each of your turns, you may play a land or cast a spell from among the cards exiled with this permanent without paying its mana cost. This is going to be a deck that's aiming to cheat huge effects into play with Hulken's Insight, so we can win the game. If you like doing big, dumb, splashy things, then this could be the deck for you. We're we'll running some cards that let us help us do this as effectively as possible. First up is that section. There's a number of different types of cards that'll help out both sides of our commander. First up is cards that let us untap the front side, so we can use this exile looting ability more than once per turn. A loot on a commander is pretty solid utility, as it also helps smooth out our draws, and with this deck we can exile some big threats that we can't cast straight away to refill our hand and then still be able to play the big threat later. For a similar effect for the back side, we have cards that give us an additional upkeep. Like the untappers, these let us exile two cards from the top of our library a turn, giving us more of a chance of hitting something big. For something a bit more guaranteed, you can look at running some top of the library matters cards. These give you that consistency that can make a deck like this really pop off, by giving you that extra bit of control to make sure you hit a large spell to put into exile so it can then be cast for free. Talking of, let's talk about the best cards that we want to be cheating into play. First up is Omniscience. Pretty obvious why this is first, as by cheating this into play it'll mean we can then cast everything else big and scary from our hand as well. In terms of some big scary creatures, Blue has a decent selection available to it, especially on a budget with things like Scourge of the Fleet and Deluvian Prime Model being some great budget beaters. Obviously, if your budget allows it, then any of the big bad Eldrazi will be really good in this deck, but there's still definitely plenty of options if you don't. After the big creatures, we'll want to run some big spells. Again, there's quite a few good choices out there that are very reasonably priced. Generally, I like big spells which help you cast more spells, or let you copy other spells. We'll have so many big effects in the deck that cards like these are sure to hit something good. And then, there are some extra turn spells. Hawkins Insight only lets us cast one spell for free a turn, so another way to get more out of it is by taking more turns, giving you more time to play some bigger threats. Worth noting that Temple Mastery goes up a notch in the deck if you're running the Library Matters cards that we've already mentioned due to it having the Miracle ability. Moving over to the bread and butter of the deck, we'll want to run a decent amount of ramp. This is so we can get to a place where we can actually hard cast some of the big dumb spells if our commander isn't about. To start, I'd recommend a pretty solid base of cheap mana rocks. Preferably ones that add blue, so we can be a bit greedy with our pips, and I'd probably start with at least 5 or 6 that are around the 2 mana mark. You can also look at running some bigger mana enablers. What's nice about these is that at a push, they are perfectly solid cards to cast for free off of our commander, as they'll still set us up for later turns. Also, as we're a monocolor deck, we can look at running some cards that reward us for this, either with Devotion, in the form of Nyx Lotus, or by doubling up the mana our islands can tap for with cards like Gauntlet of Power and Cage Stun. Moving over to our card draw, we are blue, so we have all the best card draw spells available to us. You're looking for at least 8 bits, but you could run more if you like to. Cards with Scry will get a bit better in this deck, so we can set up the top of our library. There's a wide selection of instants and sorceries, so run the best ones that you have available to you. Like with our ramp, you can run card draw all throughout the curve, so it's not the end of the world if you cast them for free off of our commander. Of those, cards with some built-in cost reduction, like Delve on Dig Through Time, make them more likely to be cast without our commander out, so are worth considering. For some more deck-specific card draw, Arcanist the Omnipotent gets better if you're running those untap effects we previously mentioned. And then you have Future Sight, which makes it easier to set up the top of our library because we can see what's coming. For our interaction, blue doesn't get the most efficient removal, but there still is some good solid options for you. Starting off with spells that remove a threat while leaving something behind. These are normally pretty solid in Commander, where the level of threat is higher, and are very solid answers to what your opponents might be putting down. In terms of board wipes, again blue doesn't have many full-blown answers. Curse of Swine is one of the most efficient, as it exiles threats, and only leaves behind tutus. Then you have Mass Bounce effects. I think Flood of Tears is actually pretty solid in this deck, as everything gets bounced, and we can then cheat in a massive Kraken, or even an Eldrazi. Next up is our protection, and we need a decent amount of it in this deck. Because of how the wording on Jacob works, if it, or the enchantment to back half, gets removed, we permanently lose access to the cards exiled with it. When it's replayed, it counts as a new version of that card so won't see any of the cards exiled with the previous version. As such, it's super important to keep our commander around for as long as possible. The best bet for protection is counter magic, as this will protect both the creature front side and the enchantment backside. If your budget allows for the free counter spells, then I would run them, 
If not, I've put on screen here what I think is a very solid selection. For me, when I'm running Counter Magic and Commander, it's mainly for protection. When you look at it through that lens, certain budget cards do exactly the job that you need. Most effects you need protecting from are things like targeted removal and board wipes. This is where Arcane Denial, Disdainful Stroke, Good Old Fashioned Counterspell, and Negate really shine. To help with the creature side, we can also run some creatures that protect Jacob. Generally speaking, I wouldn't want to drop our commander early, as it means there is so much more time for it to die. But if you find yourself stuck and need the looting effect early, these will do a great job at helping it stick around. In a similar vein, we also have Lightning Grease and Swiftfoot Boots. They also have the added benefit of being able to give an Eldrazi haste as a side effect, which is not a bad thing. Moving over to our dedicated win conditions, we've already gone over some in the cheat sections we mentioned earlier, but here are some more. With all the big dumb effects we're running, High Tide can be great at giving us the extra mana we need to cast them early. We're also running a lot of great blue card draw in the deck, and what goes great with ramp and card draw in a blue deck is Storm. Specifically, I like Mind's Desire in this deck, as if we have this in hand, we can build up that Storm count, drop Mind's Desire, and then have a pretty good chance of building a terrifying board state when the dust settles. Talking of big dumb effects, what goes great with them is having another big dumb effect. Being able to double up some of our creatures with clone effects is really strong, especially Glasspool Mimic, which can double up as a land, so it's effectively free to include. A more guaranteed win condition is Enter the Infinite and Thassa's Oracle. If you cast Enter the Infinite for free off of the backside of Jacob, you basically win the game. When you cast Enter the Infinite, you draw your deck and put something like a basic land on top of your library. You then play the Oracle and win the game. There's different versions of this, involving Laboratory Maniac and Jace Wielder of Mysteries, but the end result is basically the same. Rounding off the deck with some utility lands, as we're a monocolor deck, we can run a good selection. For me, cards that let us look at the top of our library are great in this deck, so things like Halimard Depths and Castle Vantress are great includes. Mystic Sanctuary, putting a dumb spell back on top of our library so we can exile it to cast for free, will be fantastic. War Room is bonus card draw with very little downside, so it's a card to be considered. I also like Emergent Zone, as it fits with the Blue Mage mantra of always having an answer available, and then Reliquary Tower helps us keep all those gains. The rest of your mana base will be very dependent on what you have available to you. We recently released a video with some advice on building a deck with a budget mana base, which might be of help. Until next time, please like, share, and subscribe, and let us know down in the comments if there are any commanders you'd like to see a deck deck on. Thank you very much for watching.